Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to go over how to solve a quadratic equation by using the box method. If you've watched one of my previous videos, this is an alternative to the snowflake method. Before I begin, I want to go over some key ideas. The first one, the zero product property, which basically says that if you have the product of two things, and if that product is equal to zero, either your first term is equal to zero or your second term is equal to zero. Obviously, there's the case where both of them um, can be equal to zero, and this is the one that we will be checking for these quadratic equations. The second key concept is that I want you to be proficient on how to factor the GCF since that's going to play an important role when applying the box method. So let's go ahead and begin uh, with example number one. Example number one, solve the quadratic equation. I'll begin by creating a border and distinguishing the left-hand side from the right-hand side. Because I want to solve this by factoring, I gotta move all of the terms to one side of the equation and then have 0 on the other side of the equation. I can do that by subtracting 15 from both sides. And on the left-hand side, I'll have 2x squared minus 13x minus 15. And on the right-hand side, the 15 minus the 15, that's gonna give me 0. I will factor the left hand side and the first thing that I need to check is to see if I can factor out anything other than 1. But after inspection, I come to the conclusion that I cannot, so I'll label all of my key terms. The A value, the B value, and the C value. I notice that the A value is not 1, so I cannot apply the X method. I can, however, apply the reverse box method. To apply the box method, I'll begin by recording the leading term on the upper left square. That's going to be the 2x squared, the whole thing. And now on the bottom right, I'm going to record the c value. That's going to be negative 15. I will use a modification of the x method to find the two values that will occupy these two missing spaces. So here, I'm going to get the value of a multiplied by c. That's going to be the 2 multiply it by a negative 15, giving me a negative 30. And the B value is going to get recorded on the bottom, and that's negative 13. Now I need to find two numbers that when I multiply them together, they're going to give me negative 30, but if I decide to add them, they'll give me negative 13. And after some trial and error, we're going to come to the conclusion that the values needed are negative 15 and positive 2. Negative 15 times 2 gives you negative 30, and, but negative 15 plus 2 gives you negative 13. Now keep in mind that when you're using the box method regularly, when you add these two terms, they give you the middle term. And the middle term has an x, so these ones are going to have x's. It doesn't matter uh, what value goes where, so I'll put the negative 15 on the bottom, and I'll put the 2 uh, right here on the top. Next, I'll zoom in on the bottom row, the negative 15x and the negative 15, and I'm going to factor out the GCF, the greatest common factor. And here, that's going to be 15. But because the leading term had a negative, this is going to become a negative 15. Next, I'll zoom in on the right column and get the greatest common factor between 2x and negative 15, and the GCF between those two values is going to be 1. To get these two values, I can guess strategically. For example, we have negative 15, and negative 15 times what value is going to give me a negative 15x? Well, that's going to be x, and now x multiplied by what is going to give me the 2x squared? So then that would be 2x. And we can verify this quickly, 2x times x is 2x squared, 2x times 1 is 2x, negative 15 times x is negative 15x, and negative 15 times 1 is negative 15. This means that I can factor out this trinomial as 2x minus 15 multiplied by x plus 1. And that's going to equal 0. Now that I've factored, I can apply the zero product property, noticing that I have the product of two things, and that is equal to 0. This allows me to make the statement 2x minus 15 equal to 0 and uh, x plus 1 
equal to zero. I have two linear equations. I need to solve both of them. I'll begin with yellow. So here I can solve for x by first adding 15 to both sides. On the left hand side, the negative 15, the positive 15 are going to cancel out, leaving me with the 2x. And on the right hand side, 0 plus 15, that's 15. Here to isolate x, I need to divide by 2 since I'm multiplying here. And I get that x is equal to 15 over 2. On the right hand side with green, I can solve this by subtracting 1 from both sides and I get that x is equal to negative 1. So my two solutions are x equal to negative 1 and x equal to 15 over 2. I want to go over one more example, example number two, solve the quadratic equation. I'll begin by drawing a border distinguishing the left hand side from the right hand side and like in the previous problem, we have to put all of the terms on one side and have zero on the other. Now the it's going to be easier to move the negative 3x to the other side, so I'll add 3x to both sides of the equation. And when I add 3x on the left hand side, I'm going to align it with its common term. So the 3x is going to go underneath the 5x since they are common terms. And now I'll simplify. So here I get 3x squared and 5x plus 3x, that's going to be 8x. And we have positive 4 plus 4. On the right hand side, the negative 3x and the 3x are going to cancel out and I'm going to get 0. I need to factor the trinomial on the left. I'll quickly scan to see if I can factor out anything other than 1, but I realize that I cannot, so I'll proceed by labeling all of the key terms, the a value, the b value, and the c value. The a value is not 1, so I cannot apply the x method, so I'll have to use the reverse box method again. The leading term goes here on the left, that's going to be 3x squared. The c value is going to go on the bottom right, so the 4. And now I'm going to use a variation of the x method to find the values that are going to occupy these two entries. I need to get the value of a multiplied by c, so here that's going to be 3 times 4, giving me a 12. And the b value is going to be 8, so I'm going to record 8 as well on the bottom. Now I need to get two numbers that when I multiply them together, they're going to give me 12, but if I decide to add them, they're going to give me 8. And after some trial and error, we're going to come to the conclusion that those two values are 6 and 2. 6 times 2 give you 12, but if you add them, they'll give you 8. Keep in mind that these two are your x values, so we have x's here. And now I'll record the 6 and the 2. Again, it doesn't matter uh, what value goes where as long as you use those two values to fill up these two squares. And now I'm going to focus on the bottom row. I need to get the GCF between 6x and 4, and that's going to be 2. Next, I'll zoom in on the right column and get the greatest common factor between 2x and 4, and that's also going to be 2. And to find the two missing values, I can strategically guess. So here, 2 multiplied by what value will give me a 6x? Well, that's going to be 3x. And 3x multiplied by what is going to give me 3x squared? Well, that's going to be x. And I can verify this very quickly. x times 3x is 3x squared. x times 2 is 2x. 2 times 3x is 6x. And 2 times 2 is 4. This means that I can factor out this trinomial as x plus 2 multiplied by 3x plus 2. And that's going to equal 0. Now that I've factored, I can make use of the zero product property, noticing that I have the product of two things, and that product is equal to 0. So I can make this following statement. Um, x plus 2 is equal to 0, and 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. I have two linear equations and I have to solve for both of them. I'll begin with yellow. 
So here to isolate x, all I have to do is subtract 2 from both sides, and I get that x is equal to negative 2. For green, I have to first subtract 2 from both sides. On the left, the 2's are going to cancel out, and I get 3x equal to 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And to isolate x, I can divide by, or I need to divide by 3. The 3's are going to cancel out, and I get that x is equal to negative 2 over 3. And those would be my two uh, x values, my two solutions. I now encourage you to practice on your own. So I'll leave you with these you try practice problems. The solutions will be presented in 3, 2, 1. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.